Speaking of stadium stuff, yeah. though, another thing that Jimmy Haslam said at the owners' meetings was he's essentially down to two options for a new stadium. Renovate the current stadium downtown for a billion dollars. Which or, I assume means no roof. Correct. Yes, no roof. Or build a dome stadium outside of downtown, presumably in the Brook Park lot that he has optioned to buy earlier. Why can't – what I don't understand is, is – why is it not an option to build a new stadium downtown? There's no space. Not to do what he wants to do. Okay. Not to put a dome. You, well, you could, you, could, you could find the land yeah. to put a dome stadium, but he wants it all. He wants the mixed-use component, right, right, right. Re- the restaurants, hotels, So that he should pay for shopping. the whole thing. I don't disagree. That's yeah. I think so, too. That's kind of how Jerry, Jerry's world is. Yeah. And, well, uh, that's what a not, lot of teams are not doing Not the stadium, but yeah. like the practice, the practice facility. facility the star. It's in Frisco. Yes. It's, it's, it's like his own city. It's like a community yeah. down there. Yeah. Well, where the as Patriots. I was doing, as I was reporting out this Cavs story, yeah. they kept referring back to the star. Oh, yeah. It's unbelievable. Frisco. I, I got the, it was a beautiful. I got, I, thank God I got to spend me a uh, – a training camp and preseason there. It was nice. The star I mean, in Frisco is incredible. Renovating incredible. the current stadium seem, seems stupid. It's awful. It's, it's a, a terrible, terrible idea. idea. Well, it's yeah, terrible you're idea. the one that said that it's the poorly built and all those things. They, it doesn't – you know what's funny? The company that designed Brown Stadium yeah. is the one doing the Cavs practice. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they are very good. They are, that stadium is a clunker, but this company is very good. But they don't even have a service level that goes all the way around the stadium. Like, it's only half. That's all. It's, it's nuts. The, so, the whole design. Wait a minute. Say that again. The service level is not 360. It's only half. Really? That's why you, yes. That's why you like, there's certain spots that you have to like go to a different spot to get to a different floor. Yeah, that's awful. No, uh, you're absolutely right, because yeah. when I go to the press box, I do got to yeah, – yeah, you're right. So, let's talk about this. I, the, in terms – things that I don't I, – I don't, you, know, you're, you are closer on these stories, but I don't even know if you know. The, the, if the team moved to Brook Park, yeah. how devastating is the negative impact on this? I don't think it is. I really don't. So, then why – There's a lot of people that disagree with that. Okay. The smart people that disagree with that. Yeah. I look at it as, guys, it's 10 dates a year. It's much more devastating if the Guardians leave, even though they don't sure. draw that many people, but it's 81 dates. And the Cavs right. with 41 dates and all the concerts that they put on, right. it would be far more devastating for the Cavs to leave downtown okay. than it would be for the Browns. The Browns, so what it's are, 10 dates. But what are people saying? Like, but the city is obviously trying to keep the team in, in Cleveland. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, they should, but I don't think it's that big of a deal if they go to Brook Park. I, I I don't see what the you want them to go. What to the horror is? Huh? Well, I I get it I makes get, the most sense of these two options. Well, I get the concept. Of if what you only, to if do. you're getting the dome in Brook Park, yeah, then and you, you can't do that downtown. Well, here's the here's where you lose the economic impact. On a Sunday morning, you drive downtown. You park your car. Yeah. You stop at three or four bars on your way in. Right. You're you're so so that part. And, and there's really not a lot of pre-gaming going on for Guardians and Cavs games. Right. Certainly not Guardians. Yeah. Cavs are some. And Guardians there's a little bit. But it, obviously, Browns is the big one. So those, <laughs> those bars and restaurants around West 3rd and around right. the stadium, they're going to feel it on what if, Sundays for sure. Whereas in yeah. Brook Park, you're going to drive in, you're going to walk in the stadium, and you're going to walk out. That's not, no. Or if you do frequent anything, it's all Jimmy's that you're frequenting. Yeah, Because he's going to have it all. Yeah, it's going to be true. Jimmy's world. It is going to be Jimmy's world. But is it? What about like tax revenue from the stadium? Like, how does that? I, mean, I don't know anything about. Yeah, I mean that. You know, that's you're gonna lose that. I mean, what do they do? I guess, in theory, what would you turn all that land into housing? Into would you develop that? I, Certainly, you know. there are better uses for what lakefront property in Cleveland yeah. than a freaking stadium that you use right. ten days a year. I just so I don't think it's a bad it always, thing at all. On these conversation, like because we've never had a conversation about the team moving out of the city, right? In, in terms of like. It's not leaving the area. Correct. So fans are not losing their team. Correct. But I, I, I don't know enough about the economic impact. I know that we all know that Cleveland, in the grand scheme of America, of the big cities in America, is a struggling city in a lot of ways. It's improved. The city's been been improved, in the, I know, in the 13 years I've been living here. But it, it's still tough. There's a lot of poor people in the yes. city. And I would just be... It just would suck if 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 peop, the, the the regular people of Cleveland 
would take a would if this would be a negative for the people. I I, I don't. Well, here's I don't how know it's a negative. For, here's how it's a negative for the people. If they build a dome stadium, it's going to yeah. price out a lot of a lot of fans. Like the ticket prices are going to be astronomical. That's true. Even more so than they already are. Yeah, I think. Like I, no one's told me that, but like. It's common sense. Right. Jimmy's putting a billion dollars into a stadium. He's going to try to get that money back. Yeah. He's going to do it part of it through ticket revenue. And there's going to be PSLs or something like that, I would imagine, all over again. So it's going to be very, very expensive to go to a Browns game. Oh, PSLs. So, so from that component, it would be hard. But if you're looking at, like, you want to sit in warmth and, and, like, have a normal experience watching a game, do you want the – revitalization of the greater Cleveland area, not necessarily, it would give you, it would give the city time and money to redevelop the waterfront and do it right. The Cavs are redeveloping the river and they will for sure do it right. Like Dan and I have had our wars in the past, but when that guy spends money, it is elite. It is top of the- Where, where is he? On the, the new practice facility along the Cuyahoga River. Okay. So it's it's so they're going to do a whole. Oh, it's sick. Yes. It's going to be. It's nice. going to be a whole. Okay. There's going to be a spot to you can. Uh, it's going to be like a kayak launch point. Okay. So you can actually access the Cuyahoga River now, which hasn't been done in decades. So if the Cavs are taking the front of the taking care of the Cuyahoga River component of this, if the city can do the waterfront, Jimmy handles Brook Park. Like we're talking, and I was going to try and write something about that in the next week or so. You're talking about a whole overhaul of yeah. Greater Cleveland. And we haven't even gotten to the women's soccer team that's trying to build a stadium, too. Now, I don't know where the money's going to come from for all this stuff. Yeah. Dan's going to take care of that component. You don't have to worry about that. But it will take public dollars. It, it, will, take, it will take public dollars to do the football stadium. I agree with you. Jimmy should pay for the whole thing himself. He's not yeah. going to. But we've talked about it before. There are ways, without going to the general fund, without right. taxing, with, with using people who will use the stadium, gambling, there are ways, marijuana, yeah. there are ways to get that thing built without using general fund dollars. And then the women's soccer stadium would be a cool, smaller venue, but I just don't know where you see where you get the funding for that. I'm still working on that compo- that piece of it. I would love, Mike, I, I think at some point here we need to bring on somebody, I don't know if it's from the city or and, and to talk about what the negative impact would be how bad it would be. I mean, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about the businesses and the bars. You know, that would, that would hurt. It would hurt on Sundays for sure. Yeah. It, it would hurt for sure. And it, and it's not really just you know eight or nine days or whatever it is because people go downtown on road games too, don't they? What do you mean? Yeah, but it's not to the same extent that it is. No, people, but people you go like to Saturday the bars. Night? You, you mean know, Saturday nights? No, I mean people will go to the bars on a Sunday, even if the Browns are on the road, to just hang out with other Browns fans at a bar. Does that happen? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's the West, for example, West Six tailgate on a home game is, you know, your standing room only, your yeah. shoulder to shoulder, it's packed. Right. Now, if, if you go out to Barley House or Map Room or whatever on a yeah. Sunday and they're on the road, there are still people out there watching the Browns game together, but it's right. nowhere near the same capacity and as for a home game. There's no reason why that would necessarily change. Now that I think about it, it's a, if it's a road game, what's the difference right. where the team is playing? And and it, yeah, I, I it, if those are the only two options in you know in a vacuum, the Brook Park thing makes sense because it would make sense to have a stadium. But I hate to see the city that has been on the rise in a positive way in I a think lot it still of ways. Can be. Like I get think hurt. the stadium looks terrible on it the looks lakefront. Looks awful. And they, you know, I, I had. There's a couple people who I talk to fairly frequently who this is what they do. And they've, yeah. they've been part of these stadium projects, public financing, that sort of thing. And the point that's always made to me is like, look at the Rock Hall. It is this beautiful architectural structure. Yeah. Look at the Science Museum. Nice. It's this beautiful architectural yeah. structure. And they look like Tinker Toys compared to this massive right. thing that sits empty 355 days a year. Like, what yeah. sense does that make? Now, I'm not saying the city will ever get it right. Yeah. But the Browns leaving the lakefront would at least give them the opportunity to develop that. The, the, the state's already committed the money to a footbridge to connect the lakefront. I think I would think that that's still in play, even if the stadium is not there. You still need to be able to access it. Right. And now it gives you a clean slate. Get rid of that friggin' thing. And, <laughs> wow. and use the land. Look at Navy Pier in Chicago. Why can't Cleveland have something like that? Yeah. Like, 
There are so many possibilities that are so much right. better than a stupid stadium on the wall. Waterfront property is so valuable. And we put an airport on it in a stadium. I know. If you can get are rid of the airport me? and, the, you know. You know who uses the airport? The rich guys, Jimmy yeah. and Dan. That's why I not get rid of that. That's what Dan uses. Jimmy uses it. They fly their private planes in there. They're right there downtown. Everything is done for the rich. And they have the, everybody else fighting now, with each other. Now, I think other. that there are reasons. Uh, Something about the land. I, I don't. I don't know. I've heard different theories as to why be, they can't. Yeah. Why they they can't get rid of the airport? I think it's because that's what the billionaires use. That own the sports teams in town. It's disgusting. I well, I know Dan uses it. Yeah. I, I shouldn't say for sure. Jimmy does. I imagine he does. But, but they're he also here quite a bit. Like they're. But I know. Like I've talked to Dan yeah. before. It's wild. Dan will leave his house during a Michigan State game. This is pre-stroke. Yeah. Dan would leave his house at like halftime of a Michigan State football game yeah. and be in Cleveland and miss like five minutes of the third quarter because he would, his plane was that close to his house in Detroit. <laughs> he would fly to Burke, land at Burke, drive to the queue, and miss like yeah. five minutes. It's crazy. Must be Some nice. life. Go ahead, Mike. What a life. Are there any other – and I want to let Earl hop in here for a sec, but Earl actually had an idea for a potential third option, something that hadn't been discussed yet, and I'm curious what you guys think about this idea. Earl, take it away. Yeah, this will be on behind the glass tonight, too. But my third idea was I think the how you meet in the middle, and fans may like this, may not like this, but you find somewhere else for the Browns to play at for the next two or three seasons. You tear down the current stadium and you just rebuild a dome on the land that the current stadium is on. I mean, when you talk about the airport being right there, clearly every, every code that needs to be passed for where the stadium currently is you could just tear that down and rebuild a, a dome right there. I think that's the best way that you can meet in the middle of getting a dome stadium without the Browns moving downtown, from downtown Cleveland. And I know me and Jason had talked about this before. I think that the owners, the mayor, and whoever else involved are going to have to come to the table and figure out, okay, what can the city put towards this? And then how can the Haslam family invest resources, funds, and ex uh, jobs, et cetera, back into the city of Cleveland. Here's the thing. Jimmy holds the hammer on this because he's already got the, or he's got the option to buy the land in Brook Park. I don't think they want a dome on the lakefront. Like, because you, you can't do everything he wants to do with the mixed use component. So then why is he even saying it's an option to just renovate because if that's really what he wants to do? I, I tweeted this last night. Yeah. Like, let's just be real about this. If they get the funding, they're leaving. They're going to Brook Park. Yeah. But the funding is a huge component of this. Like, they got to come up with a billion dollars in public money. And that's not ter so easy to do, especially for an owner in town who isn't really like that much. Like, can we be honest? Right. Do yeah. people really like Jimmy Haslam? No. They love Dan Gilbert. People love Dan Gilbert. Dan got casinos passed I don't in Ohio. That. You know how long they tried to legalize gambling in Ohio? For decades. They couldn't get it done. You know who got it done? Dan Gilbert got it done. Oh, listen, a nice greasy pop. Listen, I, I don't have a Bless problem you. with As a matter of fact, I like Jimmy. <laughs> Here I we like go. Jimmy. You want an extra hundred? Yeah. You know, Jimmy, uh, yesterday you allowed me to come on the Browns radio and me and Nathan did a wonderful job. Got to talk to Rodney McLeod. Had a great interview. Y'all should check that out on the Cleveland Browns Daily. And I just think that, Jimmy, you just you take care of the people that you want to take care of. And if you want to take care of a guy by the name of Tyvis Powell, I'm all here for it. Yeah. Between I, the FBI investigation, <laughs> yeah. bumbling the Browns for 10 years, yeah. the Deshaun contract, yeah. buying the Bucks, uh, getting sued by Warren Buffett, yeah. there's a lot of strikes against yeah. Haslam. And yeah. I don't know if they take this to the ballot, I don't know that they can get it passed. And if yeah. they can't get it passed, that's how they wind up back on the lakefront. That's the yeah. only way. But if they get funding, if they feel confident, if they get the right lobbyists and they get something on the ballot and they feel, and that has to happen soon. But either like, way, they have to get some public money, no? Yes, but they want the big... They the, want a billion yes. instead of half a billion. Yes. I, got, I, I figured it out. Listen. Yeah. Jimmy, that's what you need to do. What you need to do is you need to get somebody that's loved and respected by a lot of Cleveland people to pass it because you're, apparently Jason thinks that your, your, your image is tainted. So I'm willing to use my public, my squeaky clean public image mm. to help you for a couple more zeros in my check. 200. 200, <laughs> two yeah. to $300. It's not like I'm asking to break the bank. Two to 300 more dollars in my radio check. That seems fair. 
you get him a half a billion dollars, and he, you know, he gives you a couple of hundred dollars. That, that seems like a fair trade. Hey, listen. You yeah. know, what yeah. I don't understand, though, Jason, if you're right, I think about this. Okay, so if Jimmy can get a billion in public funding, mm-hmm. he's going to do the Brook Park thing. Mm-hmm. But if he can only get half a billion, he's going to do downtown. So what I would think is if the, if the Brook Park thing is such a profit machine for him, mm-hmm. then wouldn't he be better off spending one and a half billion? So let's say he can only get the half, only get a half a billion. Yeah. And instead of spending, he was going to do a billion and a billion. That's what he's looking for. Wouldn't he be better off in the long run if he spent a billion and a half, even if the public funding was only a half a billion? Because in the long run, it'll be worth so much more to be in Brook Park for him? Possibly, but I think they're going to start with they want half. And by the way, it's going to be higher than $2 billion. Like, it's going to be closer right, right. to two and a half. I mean, when you're getting to those figures, what's another $100 million? Right. At the end but, of, at the, but there is a big jump from we're talking a <coughs> billion to really two and a half billion. So that's quite yeah. a leap. I think it's going to go down to one of those things that he's going to ask and keep asking until to see how much he can get. And then whatever is left, he's just going to say, you know what, bleep it. Boom. He's going to go. It, I just pay the rest. Are, are we, percentage chance that this ends up in Brook Park, you think? 85. It, 90. 90. Yeah. It feels All the like ones that. are pointing that way. Uh, and what's our best guess is when this stadium is going to get built? 28. When they start building. Oh, well, when the they least start be building. It, that's going to depend on, like, I've had conversations with people at the Browns that, like, you got to get this on the ballot now. And I wrote about it in that story a few weeks ago, and I'm trying to remember now. The lease is up, what, 28? The lease is up in 28. 26. And 26 what? That's when they start building. That's too late. They got to start building next you year. You got to start building now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it took Minnesota three to four years, I think, to pass the legislation and uh, get the financing in place and get the stadium built. It was yeah. about a three, four-year project. So the- so the so 28 get, season is the last. It's the season last because it was a 30 year lease. Yeah, began in '99. Right. So 2028. So they need a new stadium by 2029. 2029. Yeah. And, so. and we're really it doesn't feel like it. Right. You got to decide. Yeah, I mean, that's five now. Years. It's, you know, it's 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 coming. Yeah. And one more thing on this. Keep this filed away. The I think the best path to get this thing financed is. Uh, Marijuana. The, well, marijuana is part of it. The pull tabs. The electronic pull tabs. Yeah. And we talked about this before. I wrote about it before. Yeah. The person in charge of that component yeah. is Dave Yost, Ohio's Attorney General. Who's running for governor in two years? Dave Yost, Ohio's Attorney General. Who's he trailing? John Houston, who is far ahead in fundraising and everything else. Houston is most likely... To win as DeWine retires, Houston mm-hmm. is the uh, deputy. He's the assistant, the yeah. vice governor, whatever you want to call it, the deputy governor. Houston's probably going to win. If Yost wants to make a run at him, what better way to build your platform than to get mm. financing in place for not just Cleveland. I don't like Yost. For, for facilities all across Ohio, for sports facilities mm. all across Ohio. Well, it get, should just be him. Should, anybody should be running on that platform, really. But he's the one in charge. He's the one that can control this. Yeah. With, he's a shady character, with, in my opinion. With uh, the gambling, yeah, with, anyway. the, with the electronic pull tab gambling. And yeah, Jerry, that's true. That's his, his office falls yeah. in. Yeah. And what I'm trying to say, I'm going about this horribly. Yeah. The charity gambling falls under the Ohio Attorney General's office. Mm. And that's what, that's, I think, that's how Minnesota built uh, yeah. their stadium. And that's, I think, the best path to get this one done. So all right. file Boy, that away what? because it all goes back to politics and it always goes back to money. Yeah. What?